Great. The next uh, demo I'd like to describe is called Cybersecurity as a Service. Uh, if there's a forensic investigation that's required, you want Jonathan Rajewski on the case. And particularly if, uh, you know, if you've got a, an incident where a search warrant requires looking at a device hundreds or thousands of miles away, uh, you want Jonathan Rajewski from Champlain College in Burlington, Vermont, to help solve your problem, because time is of the essence. Uh, I'd like to introduce John. I've gotten to know him. He's one of the most passionate evangelists for gigabit speeds and local war computing that I've seen. He's been supported in Burlington by Ted Lascaris, who's the CIO of Champlain College, and Stephen Baraclau, who runs the Brit uh, Burlington Tell. So uh, please welcome Jonathan Rajewski. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for having me. Um, today I'm going to present a concept of cybersecurity as a service. And the focus for this talk is going to be for helping victims only faster. So a little bit about my background. Uh, I come to you from Champlain College. Most people don't know what Champlain College is. But it's a small private school in Burlington, Vermont. We have several programs in digital forensics. Some are online, the graduate programs, and traditional program. They're accredited by the Depart Department of Defense. Um, I direct the Senator Patrick Leahy Center for Digital Investigation, which is a practical-based lab on campus where we give students a lot more experience in the space. Part of the reason I'm here is the BTV Ignite initiative, and I wanted to thank them for giving us the opportunity to share ideas. Quick four seconds about my background. I look relatively young, but basically I've been doing digital forensics for about 10 years, and I transitioned to academia about six years ago. Question I love to pose to groups, what is digital forensics? And just think about it in your head for a second. Digital is anything that can read, transmit, or store information. So the immediate thought is computers, phones, laptops, tablets, and you're absolutely right. But don't forget about everything else, routers, Internet of Things. I mean, this room knows enough that digital is everywhere. So that's the focus of what we look at. Forensics is we're going to do something in a particular way that's ultimately going to be presented at trial. So we must do things accordance to law, best practices, or it will never actually see the light of day at court. Digital, we can all agree, is complex, which ultimately creates very, very complex cases for law enforcement to deal with. Something we have to deal with as, with investigators is something called the CSI effect, which is essentially Hollywood glamorizing the digital forensic process, the forensic process. You know, it, they can solve cases during a commercial break. Uh, if you were one of the 20.65 million people in January of 2014 that watched an NCIS variant or a CSI variant, you're probably now a product of Hollywood glamorization of forensics, which is a problem for us because judges, juries, and um, judges, juries, and those people, lawyers who are prosecuting cases, expect that level of glamour. They want what they see on television. And then we have companies like this. And if you've seen the Worldwide Developer Conference video, you know about iOS 8 and the ability to take your phone and flick up and then immediately on your Mac, whatever's on your phone will show up. And then whatever's on your Mac, you can then make that automatically show up on your phone and you can walk away. Who investigates that? Who knows how to research that? Nobody yet. And companies like this, cloud, integration. I, I visited their campus the other day. I am blown away by what they do. New technology, always spiraling. This company as well. Their mobile devices, their, their mobile phones, extremely secure. How do we get into those? The problem with all this is you've got all this crazy technology moving at a rapid pace, and law enforcement or public safety has to investigate this type of, has to investigate crimes that typically always involve technology. This creates a problem because now you have backlogs. Now you have a list of cases that a forensic lab will have, and each state handles this differently, but all of them have the same problem. You'll have one case that comes in, and then the case will come in tomorrow and the day after, and every single day the priority, the priority of the cases shift. So if you have a victim or a crime against a person, typically that gets a little higher, and if there's a uh, financial crime, maybe it gets a little bit lower. This is a problem. And not to pick on the FBI at all, this is just me trying to find publicly available data. Um, this is uh, FBI talking about FBI CART in Oklahoma City. Their backlog was six months. 
I pulled, I, I'm a member of the Vermont Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. I called a couple of laboratories in other states, and I said, what's your backlog? And a lot of times the person on the other end of the phone kind of laughed. Between 20 and 75 cases, and I only called four labs. 75 cases in the backlog. That's a problem, a big problem. I feel it's a, it's a nationwide public safety issue for a couple of reasons. One, if you have someone who's being targeted by law enforcement, who is being suspected of, let's say, distribution of child pornography, and law enforcement comes to that house and serves a search warrant, they may not have an arrest warrant, but they'll just take all the digital evidence. That person will now be labeled, until trial, as a, as a pedophile by society. And let's say they're innocent. It wasn't that person. It was someone else using their Wi-Fi that downloaded those images that law enforcement saw. That's a problem. What if law enforcement in the same situation takes all the evidence, but doesn't get to the forensics for a couple of weeks, and that person being investigated is truly a villain, and then re-offends, someone else gets victimized. That's a problem. So we have two types of applications uh, that one can make an immediate impact on the backlog. We'll create secure communication portals between a laboratory somewhere else in the United States and a fully qualified team of experts that can remotely Digital, you can make copies. This isn't ballistics or, or, or DNA or, or drug cases, you know, where you can't exactly make a copy of the drug sample. You can make copies of digital. So that, that, that's application one. Application two is something we're going to focus on for the remainder of this talk. But imagine now you're an investigator, and you just received a call about an exigent circumstance. Let's go to the extreme. Missing child, Amber Alert situation. When those situations present themselves, time is absolutely of the essence. So you're the investigator. You're trained to interview people and, and solve crimes. You get to the house, interview the family, missing child, let's say it's a girl, and um, you identify technology, you call forensics, forensics response. How many different devices are in that house? What OS are they running? Can they interface with that device? Does your person have the expertise to actually analyze that type of device? What if it's iOS 8? Does anyone know how to analyze that yet? <clears throat> so the, the sad part about that story is we don't know where the child is, but we hopefully know where the digital evidence is. So the, solution I, the, solution, the situation I just described happened to us in Vermont. Now, imagine you're not the, investi the investigator anymore. Imagine that you're the forensic examiner. As a forensic examiner, you get a phone call at 8 a.m. on a Friday morning. They say, we've got a missing child two hours south of you. Grab your stuff, get down there. We've got to figure out what's going on. Because the family's saying that the child was on the laptop two hours, or the, the night before. So you travel at law enforcement speed <laughs> two hours south with your laptop and your backpack, show up to this house, and you spend the next 24 to 36 hours collecting evidence about the locations. Because you preview the laptop live with your forensic tools, very sophisticated stuff, didn't find much. Well, wait a second. This person was using a library computer. Let's go get that one. Well, what about the school? What about the friend's house they spent the night at two, day, two or three days earlier? Let's go look at that machine, because maybe they're having a correspondence with someone that could be a part of this investigation. Now, to complicate that, what if they were all one terabyte drives, and you're looking at five different systems? Does that laptop have any chance at processing five terabytes of data within a reasonable amount of time? Not a chance. That's a problem. So having lived through that situation, and completing one of the most complex reports. I mean, my report for that case was a ream of paper, literally, um, trying to describe everything that we possibly could about the digital evidence. Um, I've had a lot of time to reflect back and learn from that experience. And in the spring of 2013, when, we, when I learned Burlington was becoming a member of uh, US Ignite, I'm like, why can't we use this gigabit infrastructure to speed up the digital forensic process to help victims? So our solution and this is the, 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 the current thought, is to create something called the Forensic Operations Center. Now, what this will be is a national resource. So if you have a first responder, an investigator, that needs something analyzed in an exigent circumstance with the proper authority, um, you'll have the right people. You'll have a team of experts that all have unique skills. So one's a Mac expert, one's a Windows expert, one's an Android expert, one's an iOS expert, all very, very different systems. But you'll have the right people. Processes, legal process, best practice process, will all be followed. And tools. We'll have the latest, greatest tools with gigabit infrastructure that will allow in investigators to get what they need to find that missing child faster. 
So here's a quick case example. Is anyone from this place? Chattanooga. So uh, just so happens that Chattanooga, Tennessee is another US Ignite city. So that's why we're using it. Um, but we'll simulate another exigent circumstance. Again, we have, a, we have a missing child. So the SIU, a special investigation unit, every state or county will call it something different, but these are specially trained people to deal with these cases. They respond to an apartment in the downtown area, they identify potential digital evidence, and it's unfortunately in two different locations, in the apartment and then at school. Time is critical. I mean, people are panicking, people are irate, where's my kid, this is scary. They contact the Forensic Operations Center for assistance. Evidence in the apartment is pretty complex. Different levels of hardware, different levels of OS, different apps on top of that with all times of different versions. Evidence at the school, four different iMacs. How do you collect this? How do you get through it quickly? How do you prioritize it? Asking that for one local resource or maybe three or four local resources, sometimes in this situation too, FBI will scramble, FBI will come help. They have national teams that will respond to this. But again, time. Time is of the essence. So the way we're going to simulate this, just kind of break from the scenario, is we, we're going to connect from, from Burlington, Vermont, to Chattanooga in the story. But what we've set up is a VLAN across the US using I2 um, from Burlington, which is just northeast of Albany. We have a 10 gig connection to Albany. And we basically have a VLAN all the way to Sunnyvale here. So the real story is there's a laptop sitting at the University of Vermont. <laughs> It's, it's a commercial, commercial available stuff, like we're not stacking the deck. I have a MacBook Pro here, we have a MacBook Air there. They're both running Windows and uh, Windows uh, VMware Fusion, and we're basically going to simulate how someone would respond to this type of situation, how quick it could be. So in this demonstration, uh, we tested it locally, and this is why I love what Glenn talked about local war, and how if you had this set up within your city, how quickly you can respond. We did some tests. So the top picture is the Forensic Operations Center. You have multiple people that can all start working on analyzing all of that evidence at the same time. And then we pulled RAM and 16 gigs of, of that virtual machine's hard drive at local speed. We got one gig speed. So those that want pictures and visuals, you're about to see how fast it went. <laughs> um, this, of course, is scaled down. But the, the two gigs of RAM came over in about two and a half minutes. And the 16 gigs came over, I think it was about 13 or 14 minutes. Uh, but average, give or take, we saw just over a gig, just under a gig, depending on network congestion, lightning fast. And this is where I'll drop out of this virtual machine and see if we can get our demo to work. So what I'm using here is um, two different commercially available softwares to create the connection. The first tool is called F-Response. And what this will allow us to do is to create an iSCSI connection that's read-only to a target device. So forensics is uh, very focused sometimes on not changing evidence. We don't want to alter the evidence. By using this tool, we can basically create a very, very large tunnel that's read-only, so we're not changing the target evidence. We can pull data directly back. So what I'll do is just quickly configure this system. And this is just the Windows credentials I have over there. This is the IP of the target machine. The bottom left is showing that we're scanning. Yay, that's 11 demos work. There it is. We're now going to start the service on that target host. And to simulate this, what law enforcement would be doing is plugging in a thumb drive. I give them a red, green, and blue thumb drive as they plug it into one of these machines. This will allow us to connect into it. So now that the software is talking, this version of Windows can now see that target machine. And now I'm going to run a tool called X-Ways Forensics. And basically, what we're looking at right now is the directory path of this system. So if I wanted to browse this user's profile and say, what internet history, what Google searches did they just run? Who are they talking with on Facebook? I can now use the same exact high-speed tools 
that we use locally within a building, I can now use these across the country. So just to kind of simulate the data poll, what I'll do is just start this image to show you what it will look like. And I wouldn't really be pulling data, an entire disk image across the US. That wouldn't be too ideal. What we're talking about here is triage. Let's find the information the investigator needs so they can find this kid. But just to demo it for, for big data, because we're, we're moving big data. So if I just kick this off, it's going to start pulling. The speeds that I'm seeing across the US were 170 megabytes a, megabytes a second, or megabits a second. Um, so it's moving still relatively fast. Um, Hardware-based imaging tools, if you took a hard drive out of a computer and plugged it into a write blocker and then connected it directly to this machine to pull data from it, the average speed is 4.93 gigabytes a minute. If you're local using this tool, you can pull it at a gig a minute, which is still so fast. And if you needed to pull it across the United States, you can see it right there. We're pulling at 170, 173 megabytes a minute. So if I wanted to pull internet history, cache, registry files, all the stuff that we need to reconstruct what a user did, I can pull all of that in seconds. Now just to pop back into the presentation. So bringing this to the reality, what would happen? The SIU investigator will call both the Forensic Operations Center and local law enforcement. I like to call this just like two firehouses reporting to a fire. It's not about who gets there first, it's about saving lives. So when local forensics finally shows up, when they get there hours or minutes later, the Forensic Operations Center can work with that person or people to triage the evidence. So it's very, very much a team effort. We're not re replacing jobs, we're supplementing jo people. We're, we're helping save lives, and hopefully we're going to try to get to resolution as quick as possible. Speeds up the essence in this gig infrastructure allows it all to happen. So thank you very much.